Thanks everybody for joining us. Uh, we'll get started with a quick opening comment from Coach Riley, and then we'll take questions. Go ahead, Coach. All right. Uh, thanks everybody. Thanks for making this work. Apologize for uh, for having to reschedule this from early in the week. Um, been a good week so far. I think our team handled the bye week well, and and uh, I've had a great week of practice. Uh, excited for for this last closing stretch, and obviously the opportunity to get back on the road, go play a. Very good, very impressive Baylor team uh, that's uh, continued to get better and obviously playing at a high level, doing a great job. So it'll be a fun challenge as it should be this time of year. And uh, our, our team's very much looking forward to getting down to Waco and playing. All right, thank you, Coach. We'll go to questions. We'll start with Ryan Aber. Yeah, Lincoln, uh, appreciate you doing this. Uh, first of all, just wanted to ask you about uh, the, the, the Tuesday absences from uh, the, the press conference and the coaches show, obviously a lot of uh, speculation and things like that with everything that's going on. Just want to give you a chance to uh, shed some light on that. Yeah. It's a personal matter. Had nothing to do with my job, football, anything like that personal matter that was dealing with and dealt with it. Didn't take away from uh, any of our preparation here, thankfully. And uh, back to normal now. Appreciate it. Also wanted to ask you about uh, that 2019 game down in Waco, Nick Benito's uh, plays there at the end, especially how big of a, a jumping off point was that for him and in, in what, you know, he became pretty quickly after that. Um, and just what's your assessment of where he is right now? Oh uh, yeah. I think it gave him a lot of confidence. Um, you know, to go make those those plays in that arena. Um, it, was a, it was a big time game and obviously you know, a great atmosphere and, you know, the greatest comeback in OU football history. So it was uh, it was pretty special. And and uh, and I think for him, um, you know, he was at that point, a young guy that had earned the opportunity to play a little bit was, was still in, in a lot of ways a, a role player and was was kind of in the middle of kind of making that jump from going to being a guy that played a few snaps here and there to, to being a, you know, very, you know, regular player defensively and, and a guy that was really evolving and becoming a more complete player. So, um, yeah, I do think it, it gave him a lot of confidence going forward and, and, uh, was, you know, anytime a young guy can make some big plays in a game like that, it can, it, it can definitely be a springboard. Um, and yeah, I think he's, you know, continue to progress and grow, you know, throughout his career. I know we talked about it a lot at, at media days here this summer. Um, uh, done a good job for us this year. It's been good to get some, get some, uh, a chance to get him uh, kind of back healthy a little bit. Hadn't been completely healthy the last couple of weeks. So been good to, to let him work and kind of get, get his body back to where we expect it to be. And, you know, it's, this is that time of year where you expect, you know, your veteran guys and some of your best players to be at the very best. And and so that's uh, certainly what we expect out of Nick here going forward. Appreciate it, Lincoln. Have a good one. Thanks. Eric Bailey. Lincoln, we're about a month from recruiting. And I want to ask about one of your assistants. Uh, when you look at someone like Calvin Thibodeau, who's recruited at a junior college at an Ivy League school like Dartmouth, small private school like Tulsa, how much has his journey really helped his recruiting prowess and what the job he's done at Oklahoma? Yeah, no, I, I think it has, uh, you know, Tibbs has worn a lot of different hats in his career. And um, I think all those places have probably shaped, uh, you know, what he's like professionally. Uh, I think he's really, you know, grown a lot through those years. And I, and I would say, in my opinion, even grown a lot in his time here. And the thing about him, he's, he's very genuine. Um, and I think the you know, recruits, families, um, I think people see that, you know, he, he works at it, hard at it. He knows, you know, how important it is. And, and I think there's the added benefit of just his, um, I think, desire to, you know, to, to make this D-line as, as good as it possibly can be. And he's obviously done a great job bringing in some, you know, really top-notch players. Um, you know, he and Coach Kane have really worked well together, you know, in the last couple of years when we, um, restructure the staff the way we did and uh so no but i've been proud of his growth as a as a coach and as a as a recruiter and i think you know we've certainly uh, seen some of the dividends of that thank you lincoln appreciate it jason kersey yeah lincoln um that kind of transitions nicely to what i wanted to ask you about which was the defensive line 
Um, how do you feel like that group has played this year generally? And how have you seen that group evolve in the last couple of years as the recruiting has, has evolved like that? Oh, that group, I mean, as a whole, uh, a little bit like our team, like our defense, like our offense. Um, you know, we've had some moments of just sheer dominance. Um, we've had some moments where I didn't think we were as impactful as we could have been. Um, but uh, no, I think we've been good. I think our expectation, you know, here at the end of the year is that we need to be elite the rest of the way. Um, at, you know, great D-line play always is a is a differentiating factor in games but i think especially this time of year i it just it matters so so much and so um you know we've got high expectations for them you know i think we've had like every group we've had our ups and downs and our, and our expectation level for them is probably as high as any group on the football team right now um so um you know when they've been good we need them to be great uh, because they they have that in them and they can be that um, as a unit so you know, and I think for us, the one of the beauties is the depth. Um, and but you need that depth to, to be productive. You need it to be productive depth. And when we've been in our best, it's not just one or two guys here and there. It's you know a large number of guys coming in there making plays. And you know, we've made a big deal about the fresh bodies uh, having guys in. We're not having to play a whole lot of snaps, but you gotta you gotta see the dividends of that. You know, if you got a guy that maybe he's only getting. 15 or 20 snaps a game. I mean, those have got to be unbelievable snaps to make it worth it. So, uh, and when we've been at our best this year and other years, that's what we've had. So we'll need that, we'll need that here in the closing stretch. Um, you know, that's why we've worked so hard to, to build what we felt like was going to be a formidable front. And uh, obviously it'll, it'll be a big key here, uh, you know, here against Baylor and the rest of the way through. Parker's Billow. Lincoln transfer portal recruiting is different anyway, but what was the Mike Woods recruitment like? Did you know anything about him dating back to his high school days in Texas? Or was it like a one week cram session where just everything came together? And is he ready to return Saturday? Yeah, it happened, happened quick. Um, remember the name coming out, uh, but honestly didn't know a ton about him coming out. Um, and uh yeah, when he got in the portal, obviously, uh, you know, we we're able to, to see some of the things that he did at the at the previous institution and, and did, uh, you know, was kind of one of those scenarios where it kind of seemed like the perfect fit, you know, the right kind of guy that we felt like could come in here and make an impact. And it was in a room where we had lost some guys and, and obviously needed to replenish a little bit. And uh, so now it's been a it's been. Good so far. I hated not having him here the last couple of games. Um, he's been able to get a little bit of work this week, and you know if he continues to progress, I would, I would, you know, I would expect to, for him to be available on Saturday. Jesse Crittenden. Hey Lincoln, I appreciate your time today. Um, just wanted to ask you. Obviously, you guys have had some um, close games in, in Waco in recent years, and. Um, so I was just curious, what you know, what what is it about Waco that makes it kind of a, a, a tough place to play, and and you know, do you expect you know there to be something extra with this matchup with you guys being near the top of the Big Twelve and having kind of that recent history of close games? Um, I mean they they've done a great job there. I mean they're they've had several good teams, this being one of them over the last several years. Um, you know they've done a great job with that stadium. Um, you know, it's not the biggest capacity that we're going to play in front of, but it's they, they've done the, the atmosphere that's been created by the stadium, by their fans, uh, their administration in there is, is fantastic. Uh, so it's a fun place to play. Um, yeah, we've just had some, you know, very competitive games. I mean, we, we have. We've had, you know, a couple of them have been against some of the, you know, better Baylor teams over the last several years. Um, you, know, and that, you know, road football is always tough. and. Will there be something extra? I don't know. I, I think there's something extra anytime we go on the road, you know, to play somebody. I mean, that's 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 just the that's the nature of the position we're in. So now uh, we expect it. We look forward to it, uh, and, and know it'll be a big challenge. Appreciate it, Lincoln. Mm -hmm. John Hoover. There I am. Okay. Uh, hey, Lincoln. Um, Take you back to Monday. You sounded genuinely pleased when you found out that Joey McGuire was going to be the new coach at Texas Tech. He's obviously a guy I think that's plugged into the high school culture in the state of Texas. And it sounds like 
a lot of people are rooting for him to have some success. Uh, it's your alma mater, so I'm hoping maybe you can expound on on your thoughts on Joey and and maybe what that what kind of awkward that's going to be when those two staffs at Baylor and Tech meet on November 27th. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm not glad. I'm glad I'm not in the middle of that. Uh, it will be awkward. Um, uh, no, I'm happy for Joey, man. I've known him as a obviously coach down at Cedar Hill for for years and. I've been through there recruiting his players and uh, I always thought he did a tremendous job with that program, you know, watching their off season and the way their kids worked and played, you know, I could tell, you know, he really did a great job with, with, uh, with the culture, um, with the, with the programming, um, you know, just the kind of atmosphere around that program was really, really good during his time there. So, and he's just a, he's an easy guy to, to like, man, he's personable, uh, can talk to anyone. Uh, so no, no, no surprise that, players would play hard for him or that he could, you know, go lead a program and do it very well. Not a surprise at all. So I'm, I'm happy for him. I'm glad, you know, it's nice to have it be somebody, you know, personally and that you enjoy being around. And, and uh, so now he's a good friend and I am, I'm really, not a lot of high school coaches get that opportunity and honestly, shoot, probably more should. Uh, there's, there's plenty of elite high school coaches out there. So I think it's, uh, I think it's a great thing. And uh, I'm happy to, happy to see him at Tech at my alma mater. All right, appreciate it. James Hale. You know, Lincoln, listening to you over the years, it always seems like it's really important that you guys control the nose tackle. This guy weighs 350 pounds that you'll be going against Saturday, and he's a pretty good player. Their defensive front and how they play defense. Kind of talk about the battle that you're going to have with that guy and the, the Baylor defense and what you, what you think about how they play the game on that side of the ball. Yeah, no, he certainly changed some things for him. I mean, he's a, he's a tremendous player. Um, you know, transfer came in, has done an outstanding job, and yeah, one of those just huge bodies that's uh, you know not not easy to move, um, and and really you know doesn't always show up. You know, great great interior players don't always show up in the stat line all the time, you know, but you you feel their impact, um, and so now he's certainly one of those players. And yeah, I mean they've. Now they got a tremendous defense. Guys are playing at a high level. Um, you know, a lot of the a couple of new faces up front, but never the linebackers and back in are, are you know same guys that, that we've played against here for a couple of years now, and very very good football players. Um, I think the Petrie kid is you know, one of the best players in the country. There's no question, and obviously he's got a lot of other really good ones around him. So um, talented group. You know, they play hard. They got a good scheme. Um, it's a yeah, it's a good group. I mean, it's. It's one of those challenges you look forward to. Thanks, Lincoln. Good luck. Thank you. Okay, let's go to Justin Martinez. Hey, Lincoln. Hope you're doing well. Appreciate you uh, talking to us today. Uh, I just want to ask you about Eric Gray. I know kind of entering the season, it was going to be like a 1A, 1B sort of thing with him and Kennedy Brooks, but Kennedy's kind of run away with things lately, no pun intended. But just what have you seen out of Eric lately in terms of how he's handling, just maybe not getting as many touches lately? Eric's been great. He's been a team guy, and it's just the nature of these things. Sometimes you, you know, you a bunch come your way, and sometimes they they don't. As an offensive skill player, it's just a little bit of the nature of it. And and, you know, and Kennedy has Kennedy's gotten, you know, this kind of middle part of the season started to get pretty hot, and we we rode him a little bit more than we did Eric at times. Um, but Eric's been still a, a huge part of our team, huge part of our offense. Um, he's still a guy that we want to. Get the ball in his hands more because he is a dynamic player, and um, and so now he's improving. He's practicing his tail off behind the scenes, and we certainly plan on using him here a bunch. Appreciate it, Parker mm -hmm. Thune. Yeah, coach, appreciate your time. Uh, obviously, we see accolade after accolade rolling in for Caleb Williams here day after day, but. Uh, you guys are heading into a stretch where you're going to face what is statistically the three best defenses you've seen all year. So uh, how adequately do you feel like Caleb's prepared for that challenge? And what have you seen from him that gives you some encouragement that uh, he's going to be able to take that challenge head on? Um, yeah, I think he's just I think he's just trying to improve. You know, and we're just trying to to improve and get him more comfortable with 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 running our system. I mean, our. You know, our belief is if we run our system at a high level, then, you know, we're not, you don't get as concerned with the guys on the other sideline. You know, we, we get that we're going to play some, some good defenses coming up. Um, and, uh, you know, but we're, you know, we're pretty good offense too. And when we, when we 
when we play to our standard and when we're playing at a high level, uh, we've got a group that can be tough to stop. So that, that's been a little bit more of our focus overall and our focus with him is just continuing to get better at us, try to understand some of the different challenges you're going to face every week. But more, you know, again, more for us is you know, be better at running OU's offense and be better at, at doing your job. And, and I think if he can continue to do that, with these new challenges, um, new things schematically that he'll see going forward, he'll continue to improve. Um, but he's a good player. So, I mean, he's, uh, like I said, there's some defenses that are going to do some things that, that give you trouble and you've got to work through, but um, he's going to give some people some trouble too. Appreciate it, Coach. Let's go to Dean Blevins. Yeah, Lincoln, glad you things are well with you. Uh, curious about in the secondary, a couple of questions, actually. One is Billy Bowman and where he will actually play and will he get maybe more reps than he, he did the last time. And then also, um, Coach Grinch the other day was more optimistic about Woody Washington making it back into uh, getting to play this week, perhaps being one of uh, three guys there on the corners. Can you address that issue and, and, uh, and also uh, Billy? Yeah, Billy's Billy's doing well. You know, I give him I give him a lot of credit. You know, with the all the hits we've taken in the secondary depth this year, uh, just so many kind of crazy, unpredictable things have happened, and it's really been centered on you know that that position group as much as any on the team. We've had to have a few guys like him that have had to bounce around, you know, play different positions, and it's not. You know, for him personally, as a true freshman, it's not really how you script it up. I mean, you'd love to beginning of the year, the, the hope was you, you get him at one position, you let him settle in, focus on that one and, and just grow in that position. And then typically as guys get later on in their careers, they're able to do a little bit more, um, you know, as they've had a little bit more experience in college football in general and in that, that particular scheme. But Billy's been a trooper. I mean, he's played, he's played nickel, he's played safety, he's played corner, um, pretty remarkable for a young guy. So, um, Continues to be a, a little bit of a jack of all trades, and um, but no, I think a, a high confidence in him to to play any of those right now, which is a, a, a big advantage for us. Um, yeah, what he's done, what he's done pretty good this week. We're you know cautiously optimistic. I mean, he came off a a pretty serious thing, so I think the thing we're cognizant of is is there's a difference between being able to do some drills on a practice field and you know being able to go play a full speed, high impact game on a Saturday. So, um, you know, he's, he's, he's doing some good things um, in the drills. He's doing some good things on the practice field. Um, you know, I think he's, I do think he's close to being able to, to turn it loose. And uh, so we're, we're watching that. We're, we're trying to, obviously we, we'd love to have him available this week. That's great if he is, but at the same time, you know, you've got to keep some long-term perspective with the guy coming off a serious injury like he had. And so we're, we're trying to be, obviously we'd love to have him, but we're also trying to be smart for the, you know, his future and certainly just the rest of the season. Cause there's a lot of ball left after this Saturday. Good front. Yeah, coach, you know, uh, Caleb's getting more and more attention nationally lately. Well, he's worked his way to the Heisman conversation a very short time. Your past quarterbacks have been a little bit older by the time they get this level of hype. How is Caleb handling all that? And what do you do to keep him grounded given his youth? I think he's handling it fine. I mean, it's, uh, you know, we try to really spend a lot of time here on, you know, really focusing in on the things that are important and try not to spend a whole lot of time on the things that aren't. And, uh, you know, and so you know, we, we, we visited some, uh, I, I, I watch them and, you know, watch how he's handling things, watch how he's how he's practicing, you know, how he's doing in school. I mean, again, the things that really matter. And I mean, he's he's continuing to just be himself and come to work and practice hard every day, get coached hard every day and go back home and sleep and get up and do it again. So, I mean, it's uh, yeah, kind of been business as normal here. So, um, you know, that's, you know, we as a program, obviously, as you said, aren't new to that. I get that Caleb's new, but I think he's, um, you know, we kind of this whole team's attitude towards whether it's an individual or, or the team stuff right now and stuff on the outside about the team. You just show up on Saturday and take care of business. All that other stuff takes care of itself. And that's that's been the focus of us with every individual player. And I, I would say with our program as a whole right now. 
Now, Coach, real quick, you'd mentioned the fact that your absence wasn't football related. A lot of people were awfully concerned that it might be. Does it ever surprise you how much the slightest thing you do affects people? Like, was your phone blowing up? Did you hear the rumors or anything like that? Um, nah, my mom texted me and asked if I was okay. <laughs> that was about that was about it. So, no, nah, not really. I mean, I, you know, was here, you know, you know, working, doing my thing. So, um, no, nah, not really. I'm kind of I'm kind of sheltered during the season. So, I'm sure there's a good story I'll hear later on. But um, that was it was it was a lot more boring, I'm sure, than what's out there. Barry Trammell. Yeah, Lincoln, when you came into the Big 12 as a, you know, a young student at Tech, Baylor football was not very good. It yeah. was that way for a long time. But three times now, they built themselves back up. You know, Art built a, a great program. They had their scandal. Matt Rule comes in. He builds them back up. He, he leads, goes to the NFL. They have to retool. Now Dave Aranda has them 13th in the nation. What's what's happened at Baylor from an outsider's point of view? What's happened at Baylor to go from just the bottom of the Big 12 to a, no matter what happens, they're a consistently really good program. Yeah, no, I mean, they've, I think a couple of things, I mean, I think they've hired, you know, here's of recent, some really good coaches. Um, I think they've been, you know, really, you know, really good with their hires. You know, as you said, Matt did a tremendous job. Dave's come in, done a great job. And honestly, they probably, you know, if not for COVID last year, they, they I mean, they had a, better team than what their record showed. I mean, I, I, you know, first year staff and all that coming in, I, I can't imagine, but they, they, um, so yeah, they, they've done a great job. They, they've invested, they spent money, they built a new stadium, you know, a beautiful stadium right there on the river. I mean, they've got, they've got really nice facilities. They're in a great location as far as recruiting. I mean, there's a lot of reasons why you look at it, say it should be a great job. And, and, uh, I think it just, it took some momentum and, um, you know, once they got the, the thing that they did, I think was really smart is when they got some momentum and, and started winning some games, they, they, they pushed on the gas, man. Like they, they kept pushing it. They didn't sit there and, well, we're happy that we won some, let's, let's go build a new stadium. Let's go build new facilities. Let's go invest. Let's go, you know, really, you know, let's really push it. And I think they've benefited because of that. So uh, you got to give them a lot of credit. And back to Ryan Aber. Yeah, Ling, I want to follow up with something you, you mentioned uh, earlier when John was asking you about Joey McGuire. Uh, you said that, uh, you know, there's a lot of high school coaches who maybe deserve opportunities like that. Why do you think those don't come uh, maybe as, as often? And I uh, hope this makes sense, but is the leap from being a, a head uh, coach in high school at a place like Cedar Hill or, you know, Jinx or Union or Allen, places like that, uh, uh, bigger or smaller than maybe the leap from being in a, a position coach uh, at a, at this level to a head coach? Well, that's a good question. Um, you know, why don't enough guys get the opportunities? I mean, I think just because this business is so hard to break into. I mean, it doesn't matter if you're, a, you know, out of college and looking for your first GA job, trying to get your first position job. I mean, it's just a, there's just only so many spots and it's, if, if you, I think that the knock on the high school guys in, in the past, not that I agree with it, but I think the knock has been, you know, maybe you've never been in college coaching or you've never recruited or, you know, you've never done some of those things. Um, whereas you have people and candidates, you know, available that have been in it. Um, not saying it's right. I don't agree with it, but it's, it's just a tough business to break into no matter what level. And then when you start talking about, a you know, a guy going straight to a position job or straight to a coordinator job or head job. I mean, even tougher. Um, again, there's just not that many of them. And, and so I, I think, you know, probably just the, the history and the, the kind of the, um, the previous job experience that a high school coach would have makes it tougher. Um, it just does. Um, but now there's a lot of them that are qualified clearly that would be phenomenal coaches at any level. Um, and there, you know, there's, I think, you know, a lot of guys that could do this at a high level, no question. Um, the jump. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think running the program, some of the organization, um, a lot of that for a high school coach, there would be some differences, but you're obviously used to doing that at that level. Um, uh, 
the biggest change to me, you know, for, for guys that um, coming straight from high school, I mean, the recruiting is a big, big difference. Um, I think dealing with the, the media, the amount of media attention, you know, whatever, you don't know, say pressure, expectations, whatever. And I listen, a lot of these guys, especially, you know, talking about Joey in the state of Texas and a lot of high school coaches all over the country have plenty of pressure too. Um, when you're in college, these things play out on such a very, very public stage, everything good and bad, uh, it is different. So, um, yeah, but there's, like I said, there's plenty that deserve it. Um, not enough probably get them. Um, it's, you know, and if guys like Joey can you know, come in and do a really good job, it does nothing but, but open the door for, for more guys to, to maybe be able to get those opportunities. Appreciate it, Lincoln. Right. Eric Bailey. Lincoln, probably the easiest question you'll get today. Uh, it's a question I asked Porter Mosier earlier. Uh, Thanksgiving is coming up. What are you most thankful for? Mm, yeah, just, that's kind of crazy. It's coming up. Uh, yeah, family first, for sure. Um, thankful I've got a great family to, to go home to. Um, I'm thankful for a lot of things, man. I've, my life's been, you know, very blessed. Been able to go to some some great places. Uh, be at a place right now that I love. Um, so I, I certainly recognize how, how fortunate uh, that I've been. So yeah, thankful for my family, thankful for the opportunity that I have to, to be here and be with a lot of great people. And, and uh, yeah, no, those, those would definitely be one and two on the list. Thanks, Lincoln. All right, Coach, looks like that's all our questions today. Appreciate your time. Thank you. All right, thanks, everybody.